So, uh, Marco Iacoboni um, is a professor of psychiatry, biobehavioral sciences at UCLA, um, and works on. Well, his most recent book is on mirror neurons, as, as, as Ramachandran was al alluding to earlier, the science of how we connect with others. And I think that's what will be the burden of your talk, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the case I want to make today is that, in fact, there is, a, or to at least the kind of morality I'm interested in, is the morality that actually uh, is relevant to empathy and fairness. So it's kind of a change of tone compared to the previous talk, which was actually quite interesting. Um, and I want to talk about the evolutionary precursors of morality because as a neuroscientist I think that I study the brain and our brain doesn't come out of nowhere. It comes from a process which is called evolution. And so we, we can actually study animals and study the brain of animals and understand our own brain. Um, and I think that one thing I want to say is that the kind of foundational aspects of morality I'm interested in are really empathy and fairness, which I think John would uh, consider the second uh, um, aspect, first and second. Um, and in fact, there is now a wave of empirical work on empathy and fairness. And you could see that there are some trends. In fact, when it comes to empathy, uh, there's plenty of studies that are really interested in imitation and mirroring. And I'm interested in those kind of studies. I've done uh, several of those studies. And I'm going to talk about mostly of this kind of uh, uh, research. But there's also plenty of research on fairness. And now there is a large trend in neuroeconomics that uh, um, is interested in fairness. And we may uh, hear something about it uh, tomorrow. Uh, but I also want to say that even fairness, which seems something that is so uniquely human, um, in fact, there is evidence that it comes all the way back. And uh, certainly the guy that uh, has studied fairness behavior um, in monkeys uh, most extensively is certainly Franz Deval. And he's done several studies on this. I want to single out only a couple of them. Uh, one was published in Nature in 2003, and one very recently in PNAS. And in the first one, what they show is that if you look at monkeys' behavior, monkeys refuse to participate if they witness a conspecific obtain a more attractive reward for equal effort. So I think it's a very important finding because it really tells us that some aspects of uh, uh, morality and fairness that we think are so uh, entrenched to our being human, in fact, come really all the way back. And we really have to think, we have this tendency to think about ourselves as on a pedestal, uh, kind of different from other species. But it's very important to anchor uh, all our pr properties and functions uh, in the evolutionary framework. And the other one that I think I want to uh, briefly um, point out is this uh, study recently published on, uh, in which the monkeys are studied with regard to, they have different two, two main options. One is selfish behavior, and one is a pro-social behavior. And what they find is that, in fact, pro-social behavior is strongly, um, monkeys evidently show a pro-social behavior. There are three main factors that actually modulate this behavior. One is familiarity, if the animal is actually um, interacting with an animal that uh, is familiar with. And that one is equal pay, uh, whether or not the other animal is also paid equally compared to the animal that is studied with regard to the option, selfish versus social. The other one is visibility, seeing the animal. And I think I want to emphasize visibility because I think it's one of the uh, classical features of mirror neurons, the fact that these cells that uh, are modern cells fire to the side of somebody else's action. And I want to switch my brief talk to the research on mirror neurons, I really want to, I want to point out only a few studies that link mirror neuron and mirror neuron activity with tendency to empathize with others. Okay, first of all, what are these cells? Uh, you probably have seen this slide many times, but just in case you don't know um, these kinds of data. What you see here, it's uh, the one on top, of course, there are two main uh, situations. The one in which the monkey on the left side is watching somebody grasping, and the one on the right side in which the monkey grasps. When you look at individual uh, cells and you study the behavior of these cells, the way you graph this behavior is uh, in, in your physiology is with these two, two things. One is called raster up here, and one is called histogram. Each one of these lines represent a trial, and each one of these little marks represent an action potential, the cell fires or discharges. And you can see that both when the monkey makes the action and when the monkey observes somebody else making the action, there is a discharge of the cell. And the one at the bottom is called histogram. It represents the change in fire rate of the cell. So there is a very robust discharge for both 
making the action and observing it. You don't need stats to really understand that these cells respond to this experimental condition. And mirror neurons are very well known for because of the, their association with grasping action, because that's the very first uh, discovery was made exactly on these kinds of actions. But the case I want to make today, because it's linked to empathy, is that there are also mirror neurons that respond to facial expression. And the best work on the, in this domain has been done by this guy, Pier Francesco Ferrari. He's an interesting guy. He's been, uh, he got his uh, PhD with Elisabetta Wieselberghi studying monkey's behavior, and now he's doing uh, neurophysiology work with Rizzolatti. So he's a, he has a very unique background, both ethology and neurophysiology. And you can tell that he knows the monkey's behavior well because he's able to do these kinds of uh, facial expression extremely well. So he has studied uh, mirror neurons responding to these kinds of uh, facial expressions, both ingestive and communicative, like lip smacking. And he shows that, in fact, there are cells that respond to these kinds of situations. And so here you have the observer that has a cell in the brain that fires when the monkey makes the action, when the monkey sees somebody else making the action. So there is a, an immediate equivalence between making it and seeing somebody else making it. And so it really creates a nice connection between people when it comes to empathy, understanding the emotional states of others. Well, my work is mostly done with brain imaging, although now we're doing some studies in which we record individual cells in the human brain. And we've done a variety of imaging studies in which we have tried to use the monkey data to kind of model the activity uh, that we see in, uh, in our brain imaging scanner to figure out which regions are rich of these cells. And uh, more or less what comes out of the brain imaging work is that there are two main areas that seem to correspond nicely anatomically with the monkey region that contain these cells. And there are, and are these regions in red that seem to contain these mirror cells. We've done several studies on imitation and also studies on empathy. We started with imitation because, of course, it makes a lot of sense. If you look at, at the properties of these cells, they find when you make an action, when you see somebody else making an action, they seem to really be designed for imitation. But in fact, it turns out that imitation is a behavior which is not only pervasive in humans, but is strongly linked also to empathy. And in fact, there is a phenomenon called the chameleon effect that really links well imitation and empathy. Uh, it turns out that when you interact socially with other people, you have a tendency to imitate what others do. And you do this automatically. You're not even paying attention to it, and you just do it. But of course, there are individual differences. Some people do it more than others. Some are more chameleons than others. And it turns out that there is a nice link between the tendency to imitate and to be a chameleon and the tendency to empathize. The more you are a chameleon, the more you empathize with other people. There are studies, social psychology studies by John Barge and Tanya Chartrand that show this very nice correlation. We wanted to kind of capture this visually, and so I was with the student. We, were, we, we thought, well, we have to kind of find some uh, um, picture that really captures this. And because you know, it's political season and there is a lot of uh, neuropolitics here, I think that's this, the, new, the next two, uh, two pictures are also in line with the whole team. And so what we found was that uh, there was a picture of President Carter and the chief of his staff is giving a, a speech. And this is, this is the, the poster that the chief of his staff uh, um, uh, is making. And later on during the talk, And it really comes out nicely with Carter because he also got the Nobel Prize for peace. So he really pri primes this idea of empathy. And uh, in the conceptual commons, there is a review article I'd, um, I'm going to publish next year, but which is online already, um, that really describes some of these uh, studies, if you want to dive more into the literature. So when we thought of this uh, social psychology data, we thought, well, there is a very nice link between imitation and empathy, but what does it tell us in terms of brain system? That's, you know, well, that's a Sam Harris agenda. Let's figure out, let's map perfectly well brain activity and human behavior. That would be fantastic. In fact, when he finishes doing that, he's going to get his PhD. <laughs> and so the idea was that, well, if you have a system that is really linked to imitation, which is the mirror neuron system. And we know that there are some areas in the human brain that are classically linked to emotion, especially the limbic system. You have to think that probably there is a larger system in which there is communication between this mirror neuron system 
and more classical in vicarious that really enable empathy at, at the level of simulating the uh, mental states and emotional states of others. And so we did an experiment. Our model was uh, pretty much uh, simplified this way. So mirror neurons would simulate the facial expression. You see somebody expressing their emotion with their face. They simulate the facial expression activating in your own brain for the same kind of facial expression. And then in some way, they have to talk to the limbic system su such that they trigger the activity that makes you feel the emotion. And if you look at the anatomy, classical limbic areas and, and uh, the, you know, the classical neuron areas described by our studies are really linked anatomically by the, by the insula. And so we had this idea that, in fact, this whole large system composed of these three major neural systems would enable this form of empathy that is really based on uh, kind of simulating the uh, emotional state.